Hello. Hi there. And welcome to, we're going back to our Deadly Doll Watch-a-thon. Um, continuing our Deadly Dolls. Because you have to be so specific. Yes, because we have to be so specific. Doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter, you guys. But um, we did the boy and the boy too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the way I said that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's so viciously. The boy. <coughs> okay. The boy and the boy two are completely different movies. They are and they aren't. Um. They well. Okay. So. The boy came out in. 2016, I think the sitcom one came out two years later. And it's interesting because they're directed and written by the same person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the guy that directed um, Orphan First Kill. Um, what's his name? Uh, I don't remember his name, but it's actually the same guy who directed Orphan First, First Kill, the prequel to Orphan, if you guys know. Like, and the didn't Orphan he also direct that movies? Stay Alive movie? Yes. Yeah. Um... But I, it centers around the stall Brahms, and I guess he decided he wanted to make them connected but not connected. So, like, it doesn't exact the second doesn't really follow the same story exactly as the first one, but the same doll and even the same mansion. Yeah, right? the only thing that the boy two does is Katie Holmes, the star of the boy two, does research on Brahms. And finds out all this stuff that's happened clear back to the 1800s or early 1900s with the doll. And the last event that happened was the incident with the first movie. Which so, because it is kind of connected. Because they like, talk about how he came out of the wall and like was alive the whole time. And these spoilers... Yeah. Why do you say that? We've been doing spoilers in our movie reviews. I know. For like the longest time. I know. But yeah. Um, if they're following But the basically the first one... <laughs> the first one we thought... We both thought was... Mm. Had what? Had, was slow? So... Okay. Yes. My... F okay, I'll go. I guess... Do you want to go first? Or do, you, do you want to go first or do I? Do you you go, go first. first. Okay. I thought the original movie, so doll wise, I think Brahms is a great creepy doll, cool, whatever. The original movie, I think, is overrated. Um, and I think it's artistically wise, very interesting. Um, and it does have some points of like it hits certain beats, but then it's kind of offbeat. And the acting isn't bad. I don't want to like come too hard on the actors or anything, but I don't think the acting stood out so much. Um, and the story was sort of just, I mean, outside of the concept of what was going on, uh, the way they told the story was sort of unimaginative and kind of just like, like very like jump scare oriented or kind of just tonic, tone wise oriented. Like, like it, like it was all about atmosphere and making yeah. it creepy. It's and like I think you didn't actually see the doll doing stuff. So yes, because we do spoilers um, in our reviews. Um, I I think so. The original one it focuses around a man in the wall that decides to move the doll around, um, and so it's not exactly haunted, um, which I think is creepier in hindsight in a way, just because it's that whole concept was more unique than the second one. Yeah. Um, and I think the ending of the first one was better. However, at the same time, if I flip flop it, I liked the story overall of the second one better. And I liked the acting and the characters in the second one better. Because I thought the character, I thought the cast, the story, the way they told it was more interesting. It wasn't as boring. However, the ending and the fact that Brahms is now all of a sudden haunted and not like controlled by a man who's doing all this stuff was not as creepy and then also like the ending was just sort of weird and like Brahms turns into like a demon thing kind like of possessed. like a doll that like, like he's, he falls apart and basically his face melts off and it looks weird it looks and weird. it looks like he's been burned yeah, like, yeah it, like, just, it was just weird 
and I didn't explain what that was about. Like, I think the whole, like, concept of how the family has this horrible traumatic experience sets up this family that's really good, like, you know, like, in horror movies, you want to care about these characters. Like, they go through this whole experience of having a break-in and the trauma of that, and the son goes mute, and then it makes him a perfect candidate for Brahms to kind of control him. Which, even though they're going for the whole he's a haunted doll thing, it makes it more impactful. But then when the reveal happens at the end, it kind of feels like any other doll haunted haunted doll movie in the sense that it's just kind of like, oh, it's a haunted doll. And, like, one guy gets, like, pinned up against a wall and gets killed or whatever. Um, and then the house explodes and I think the family just barely survives. And then there's a twist ending on it, which was actually kind of creepy where the kid is like Brahms still. Because like he ends up being like a human vessel for Brahms. Which yeah. I kind of wondered if that means that, that means that the guy in the original movie was actually possessed by Brahms too. Because he had no, the mask. The guy in, that was in the wall was Brahms. That was him? That was the little boy that they um, said died in the movie. The parents oh, said that they di died right. in the fire a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or seven years ago or oh, whatever. Yeah, so and then, that's why he looked have like no a idea. teenage boy. But So then then I don't know why they kind of... I, yeah, that is weird. Then it's I like am, the doll from the second one is now possessed by the actual Brahms that she kills in the first one. I guess. I guess, yeah. But they never go into that. They don't explain that in detail. <coughs> but I will say... Story-wise, the second one was better, but the connection between the movies was weaker, and the ending and the concept of Brahms haunted slash, like, the way it's controlled, say, is less interesting. On the flip side, the original has a more slow and uninteresting story with a creepier um, concept behind it and a well, much more well-executed ending. So I don't know. I, you could kind. Of, I, I I kind of feel like split on these movies just because what I liked about the first one I l didn't like about the second one and vice versa. So <coughs> I almost want to say that I like the second one better, but they're almost both equal. I would have to agree. It's they're both like very the equal. Ending. They're yeah. just so different. It's like they're so different from each other that. I liked one, like, I, what I liked about the original, I didn't like about the sequel. What I liked about the sequel, I did not like about the original. It's like if they could put the sequel storyline in the, with the end of the first one. That's what I've been saying. And then turn it around and yeah. do the first one as the second one. Yeah. And have that be the possessed doll at the end. And it's not actually possessed, and they think it's possessed, but it's actually, like, the man in the wall. Man that would the wall. That would have yeah. been, I think that would have been the perfect Brahms movie, but that's not what happened. And so we kind of got the best of both worlds in two separate movies. So I think both of these are well-earned watches. Just don't let the ending of the first one hype you up for the ending of the second one. And don't let the depressingness of the beginning of the first one, like, ruin your interest in the second one. Because I think the second one has much more interesting build-up and climax. And the writing and the script was much, be more, was much better executed. I think both so, movies are underrated. They both are underrated, and they both have different things that are executed much better than the opposite. So it's sort of like a flip side kind of thing. Yeah. So I feel like it's a very split for different reasons kind of thing. I think they both do better, but the other one didn't. Which yeah, I exactly. said over way too many times, so I think you guys get the gist. I yeah. over said it. Anyhow, you want any other <laughs> thoughts on it that I didn't say? Um, I'm sorry. Not really. I mean, I kind of agree with you on everything. I think I like the second one overall a little bit better because I do like... The, I, story is more important to me than the climax, which is why I like the second one better. However, the ending of the first one was way more worth it, I guess. So it depends on how you <laughs> look at things. If yeah. the ending is more important to you overall, then yes, the first one is better because I think that concept is creepier. But I just think the story and the build-up was better in the second one. Even if the ending was a little bit weaker, I'd take point. That's where I take the points off it. So, like, I get the second one is four stars just because of the, the script and the plot. But, like, I cut off a star because of that ending. Yeah. Whereas the first one, I liked the ending better, so I gave it, like, three and a half stars. Perfect. All right, well, that's our review for The Boy and the Boy 2. Like and follow for more. Yeah, like and follow for more. Bye. Bye.